Spider-Man, Spider-Man, can do whatever a spider can. Swing a web any side. Can't you see? He's just the guy. Look out! Here comes a Spider-Man. Yeah. As you guys could probably tell by uh, singing the theme song for Spider-Man, we're going to talk about... The Amazing Spider-Man. Or, oh. he was amazing, but, you know, he's now kind of shifting gears, going in a different direction. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Tyler Preston 20. And this is a dislike bomb of YouTube status, fame, and legendary quality. And, yeah, Spider-Man. What about Spider-Man? Uh, it seems as though his contract has not been renewed at Marvel. And now, he's going to Sony. It's not like the first time just, like, this kind of stupid stuff happened. Because I remember, like, a while back after the Sam Ramley uh, trilogy just ended, like, basically... They, they got screwed over. They got screwed over. They screwed over, and they decided to make the amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. Yeah, uh, you know... Back in the day, we were hoping for Spider-Man 4, and instead, they kind of were like, let's reboot it. Let's go with the, you know, Chad Spider-Man, not the nerd Spider-Man, the true to the comic Spider-Man. Right. And so, we got yet another reboot. I believe it started, what was it, in Civil War that the new Spider-Man for the Marvel Universe happened? Yeah, the new one, when he saw Captain America's shield, and everyone was like, Woo! He's back! And then he made Homecoming, literally Homecoming, because he went back home. Yeah, and then after Homecoming, there was, like, the Avenger movies, the Infinity War. And the uh, Endgame. Oh, man, that was, that was something. And then, of course... Here we are in limbo about the future for the Spider-Man franchise. Because even like after they made these movies, there was also side movies that they made that was not part of the MCU. There was like that Venom movie, which I personally really liked. And then there was also, of course, the Spider-Verse. Which was better than I ever, ever imagined it could be. Yeah, people are now calling it like one of the best Spider-Man movies since the second movie from Sam Raimi. I don't know. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's not. Eh, it's kind of like hard to really tell because they're both good in their own ways. So yeah, Disney and of course Sony have major disagreements about Spider-Man. Apparently, according to the sources that I've seen, it might be changing right now because it's like constantly changing, but they're saying right now that Disney want to have 50%. Yeah, I see, like, originally the deal was this. Uh, they got 5% of all the opening weekend stuff, and they got all the merchandising. That was all Disney, but Fox got the movies, and they paid for that, too. Wait, wait, Fox? I mean, Sony, crap. <laughs> oh man yeah because i know for a fact that like fox did like uh oh man fantastic four and these other x-men movies like yeah, yeah, so we're, many we're all human we can make mistakes on camera whatever to keep going <laughs> but um anyway like it seems as though that at this point disney just owns everything like they have 20th century fox they have marvel they have lucasfilm espn espn abc <laughs> They they also have their own like service like Disney Plus right now. So they got like ABC. Yeah, they do. They have yeah. ABC. And you know what else Sony has? Insomniac Games. Of course, like basically what happened recently was like they bought Insomniac Games, and of course, like they also own like Naughty Dog and these other small companies. Ah, uh, but you know the point I'm getting at here? Yes. Insomniac Games, which Sony now has, was responsible for that Spider-Man PS4 game. Yeah, it seems still, like, I guess, perhaps, like, they did some sort of separate deal to make that Spider-Man game happen, because, obviously, they had to license the character to make the game. Yeah, but, like, if they have the same writers, and, you know, they've been doing, like, a pretty good track record here, they made Into the Spider-Verse, and they made the Spider-Man PS4 game, you know, true-to-form Spider-Man original things that were great, maybe they can do a good Spider-Man, like, you know, movie, like, Separate from the MCU. Isn't the actor um, also signed up to do two more movies before this ends for him? Yeah, Tom Holland, he's going to be back for at least two more films, along with John Watts as director. So they got the whole band back together, but, you know, I think this is a, you know, it's a good thing. Like, do you think that 
perhaps because of this stuff happening, he might actually appear in like one of those villain movies? That's what I'm hoping for. I've been really hoping for this crossover, and it did not seem possible until just today. Yeah, it seemed as though that because they had that exclusive deal, they were only going to be allowed to just put like Spider-Man in the Marvel movies. And yeah. I gu- and I guess for the upcoming like whenever they're gonna do like the next Avengers, if they're gonna use like Deadpool instead of Spider Man as a I guess a selling point. But even like the Deadpool is not gonna be like, you know, hardcore, like R rated Deadpool. That's gonna be interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I wonder if they're gonna actually still continue to make those movies to be R. Because I know for a fact, at least Deadpool 2, it had like three different cuts, right? The theatrical cut, the extended cut, and also some sort of PG-13 Christmas cut. Yeah, I have no idea. But anyway, anyway, the big focus here is on Spider-Man. What side are you on, Sony or Marvel? Honestly, I'm on the side of, you know, whatever company can make a good movie, I'm on that side. But Sony has like a... Like a hit and mix track record, like yeah, they have Tom Roth and Amy Pascal, who have just been screwing over every single Spider-Man trilogy so far. They ruined Spider-Man Three. Well, I'm gonna say ruined, but I actually like Spider-Man Three. But they they're responsible for them cramming in all those different villains and subplots. That was them. And then when they had that major trilogy, they had to shoehorn all those tie-ins for Sinister Six when they could have focused on making a good film first, because it was kind of nonsensical, really. And now they kind of just ended this trilogy prematurely, unless they continue the story with Peter Man, uh, Peter as Spider Man on the run from all the villains because his identity got exposed. Oh yeah, spoiler alert! In Spider Man Far From Home, Mysterio reveals to everyone that oh yeah, Peter Parker is Spider Man. Like, it's not like, you know, Spider-Man has taken off his mask so many times in the movies at this point. Like, there was, like, the second movie where he revealed his mask. There he was, did it at least, like, in every single movie. Like, every single movie at this point. But I guess for this movie, for some strange reason, this is, like, the end all be all. Well, I mean, it takes place in, what, 2019? Yeah. You know, with smartphones? It's kind of like, yeah, I guess it makes sense that no one would keep it a secret. Yeah, I guess because the presence of social media is much more bigger than, like, 2002. I mean, remember Spider-Man 2? He was maskless in front of, like, hundreds of people yeah. in that train scene? Yeah. That can't happen nowadays. There are too many people who just blurt out his name somewhere or show his face to people. Right, because, like, cell phone technology was not capable of taking pictures like that. Because the old cell phones, they used to be big, they used to be bulky, then they came to flip phones... They were not as fancy and didn't really have any internet and had bad service. Now, like, the fancy phones could record video, record audio, and do these other kind of special Yeah, blah, feature. blah, blah. Okay. We need to know, like, okay, so... I'm inclined to think that this is actually good for that one reason, that they might... Plus, there was the whole thing going on, you know, with Peter Parker being more of an Iron Man character. He was focused on him... Not Uncle Ben. And there was a huge departure. Like, he was not, like, a self-made superhero. He was more like a... He was just using Stark technology. And all the villains were like, oh, disgruntled Stark employees. That's what they were all. Now they can finally branch out from that. That's great. It's kind of interesting because every time they tried to reboot the franchise, you had to go back to Uncle Ben's death. Like, it was the first one for the sin. Well, we don't know if they're going to reboot or not, actually. Yeah, yeah, but, like... Basically, the fir- I mean, the first movie with, like, Sam Raimi, it made, it made sense because it was literally, like, the first movie. But then they did it again in the second movie. That was the worst one. Like that- It was actually inferior to the other one. That Uncle Ben death was just, like, he had he had to be dying on purpose because, like, he was aiming the gun directly at his own chest. <laughs> I know, right? But, like... Also, the fact that basically Aunt May, she looked way younger in the newer ones, right? Yeah, apparently she's like, like I think fifty or something, but like she just looks so young. Like she looks younger than our aunt. <laughs> so young, really? Like, like at least the old one in the past actually, you know, looked like an aunt, like someone who's actually believable. Yeah, I met my aunt actually. Crap, <laughs> but um. 
Anyway, like, so, good outweighs the bad, or the good, or the bad outweighs the good. You know, I think that, you know, that, considering where Marvel was going right now, I mean, they own everything. They need some opposition, you know, they, in order to improve. And frankly, MCU Phase 4 looks like a hot mess. Okay, well, let's try to recap what's going to happen in, like, Phase 4. Because there's, like, the Loki t- TV show, apparently. There's the, the Hawkeye TV show. There is also, like, uh, Doctor Strange. That's and some a movie. Yeah, that was also supposedly going to be a horror movie. Well, we should probably focus on one thing first. Right. Loki, What If, WandaVision, Hawkeye, and also, like, there's going to be Falcon and Winter Soldier. Those right. are new shows. And then the movies are going to be Black Widow, uh, Doctor Strange, uh, Blade, who's apparently Muslim now. Uh, since when he was a Muslim? Since, you know, politics set in. Okay. Uh, and let's see. And also now there's going to be Lady Thor. Which oh, yeah. Is actually really, I think maybe even worse than Captain Marvel as a character from the comics, but whatever. We'll see. Or actually, I won't because I'm not watching Apparently, this one, I guess, for the new store is going to be directed by the same guy behind Ragnarok. 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 Yeah, Taika Waititi, who's now the new Ryan Johnson, apparently, but whatever. But, um, I can't say that the new movies actually interest me. Like, all of them just seem like, you know, stuff that does not interest me at all. It's not like, if they were going to make, like, a Black Widow movie like they're doing right now... I know that I know for a fact that they're gonna push the envelope because I, apparently, like her story was really dark, and so I don't think they're gonna try to appeal to that kind of mature audience. Yeah, they can't really do her story justice, and plus, it's really late. Like they, that should have been a phase one or phase two film, really. Basically, as everybody probably know by now, spoiler alert: she died in like the latest Avengers, and so. <laughs> it made sense if it was actually you know when she was still alive. This is just like freaking stupid. Like they did the same thing with Han Solo. They killed the character, and they're like, "I have a prequel movie where there's like literally less stakes." Right. It would make more sense where it's like when she was still having more stakes, like like during the Avengers or whatever. Yeah. Plus, if they were gonna do a movie of a character I really want to see, I would want to see a Scarlet Witch movie. Now that's something I want to see, like House of M. Right. But other than that, the new MCU seems to be driven by, I guess you could say, political stuff. And anyway, I think that maybe it's a good thing that Spider-Man is not going to be part of that. Like, they had, like, Tom Holland talking about Peter Parker being, like, gay. Gay. Yeah. That was weird. He's (sighs) supposed to be straight. That's kind of a thing. He, like, there's, he's, like, all these different love interests. It's like making Bruce Wayne, like, like, you know, gay too or something. Right, like, I mean, if Peter Parker was presented as straight with all these love affairs, like with Mary Jane Blind, there was also like... Mary Jane Blind? Oh my goodness, did I just mess up the name? Okay, just Mary Jane, Mary Jane, there was also Glenn Stacy, uh, who else? Gloria Grant. Glor- Gloria Grant, uh, what else? Uh, I can't even think about anyone right now. Let's see, there was Liz Tyler. Liz Tyler. I see anyone else... Uh, uh, well, I'll uh, get back to that. I have a big book of like characters. Yeah, we. I think we have it somewhere. But um, he has so many love affairs. So now he's just like, oh yeah, he's just like totally gay apparently. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to do that for a different character. Like, I know for a fact that Mouse Morales was actually supposed to be that way. <laughs> Uh, but then, like, in the movie, it's actually changed to be straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an example of straight washing. How dare they? <laughs> I guess. Are we dare they? Um, well, I guess we covered everything. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah. I'm not usually on Team Sony, but on this one occasion, bring it on. And I guess I'm just team whoever makes the good movies. Sony has, like, of course, a mixed track record, but at least they're not trying to push their political views onto you. Uh, Ghostbusters 2016. Okay. Maybe that one time. 
I meant like the Spider movie, Spider Man movies. Right, 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 right. Men in Black. Okay, Men in Black. Remember they were trying to like do something like uh, they're the people in black. Remember that Tessa Thompson was like going on. <laughs> you didn't see that movie, did you? I mean, I, when I saw that trailer, I thought it meant to be like a joke. Also, well, remember there was supposed to be like the remember X Men, like the X people or whatever, where the X women with it. <laughs> X Force, the X Force, right? Well, that was Fox action. Never mind. Yeah, the X Force was like the joke for. No, no, no. The, like in the actual new X Men movie, Dark Phoenix, they had this joke where it was like, uh, "Oh, women do just as much as the men, or we save the men, or something." So we should be called like the X Women. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, uh, just like bomb ouch. And of course, you can find me at uh, Facebook. Twitter, YouTube, and these other social media sites as Tyler Preston 20. And until next time, take care. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.